and welcome back. This is episode 15 of building a Flutter game, a 2D game in Flutter uh, that's going to be multiplayer. Uh, and we're going to build it entirely from scratch using no frameworks or libraries. Uh, now here we have the tag. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to create the episode 15 start tag. So you know where we started at. And so what we did in the last episode was to uh, make basically our health bar update whenever the player actually loses health and in future we might gain health by collecting a med pack or something similar. And you can see right now obviously the player doesn't die yet if uh, if basically um, yeah the health that goes to zero it just is a zero. I, I wonder what actually happens if we go below zero. Uh, we're just empty. Uh, player d doesn't die. Uh, that's another thing we might implement at some point. But what we're going to implement in this episode, at least we're going to start on it, is to make the player shoot bullets, right? So basically, we'll do it in a way where if I tap the screen or if I press the space bar, um, I will start shooting bullets directly into the direction uh, at which I'm pointing, right? So um, first of all, we need the model for a bullet. Uh, if you look at our models here, we have a player model and the bullet is kind of similar to the uh, to the player model in the sense that it has a tower position, right? It has a position and it also has a velocity. The velocity, though, will not change um, because the bullet will not, you know, you will not be able to accelerate or decelerate the bullet. Uh, we're assuming we're in space. So there is no friction. Uh, the bullet will not slow down. Um, but it will basically hit a wall at some point. And at that point, obviously, the bullet will change state into where it's no longer flying, right? It's now exploding. Uh, so that's another property we will add to the bullet. But we'll copy these two properties. Actually, what we're going to do, we're going to do something a little bit uh, hacky. We're just going to copy this code into a, a bullet model. And uh, we change some things. Um, change that to bullet model and then we just remove the oops uh uh one or two model and then we just remove the things we don't need mm, don't need the angle up um we don't need the angle in here either so that's a quick way to create this um obviously if you wanted to you could have something that's a base class for something that has a position and velocity, uh, but we won't get there yet. Um, that might be done in the future if we ever need it. Um, yeah, for now we don't. Uh, so now we can create the bullet though. Okay, and now basically in our game, uh, here we have one player, right? But uh, there's only one player, that's us. In the future, obviously, once we have the multiplayer game going, uh, there will be more than one player. There will be our player, and there will be basically the opponent's players. But for now, we only have one player. But also, at this point, we already have a bullets, multiple ones. Okay, so we'll initialize it here. Um, and it's required. Bullets. Um, um, and it's going to be empty when we start. So let's uh, also... Print those out if you wanted to. Um, okay, so now obviously, uh, if you look at our, uh, oops, that's not what I wanted. If you look at our analysis, we say, okay, bullet is required here. Uh, so basically, for now, we have no bullets uh, when we um, bullet model, when we create the game model, right? The, we didn't fire yet, so no bullets yet. And so let's do that. Uh, okay, so now we're all happy. Um, let's restart our game. I'm we'll scratch here um, while we're speaking. And now basically what will happen is when the player fired, we need to add bullets. So uh, let's go into our game, into our player. And uh, as you remember, when we uh, update our player, we give him the set of keys and also the gestures uh, that are currently active, right? So the gestures actually are not the ones that are currently active, but it's the ones that we collected so far. And uh, the keys are, it's the key that are currently pressed. 
So uh, all we have to do here is um, we'll add another comment here just to uh, uh, firing shots. Oh, this is a bullet. And uh, so basically, if the keys uh, dot um, contains, and we ha don't have the fire key yet, right? So what we need to do when you go to our inputs and add a key to fire. So for, for now, we have left, right, and up. We can't go down. And we have a fire key. And so basically what we'll do is if the key that was pressed, the logical keyboard key, was um, space, then uh, we'll return game key dot uh, fire. OK. So now we are happy. Um, if it is basically, um, if keys contains a game key dot fire, we will say that uh, we need to add a bullet. Uh, and we will not say we will need to add one. We will actually add one right now. Thing is, though, where do we have to add it, right? For now, what we'll do, we will um, add it in the next tile for now, just to be simple. Or you know what? We're just going to add it right at the player position. I think that makes sense. Uh, we just basically want to see right now that we can add uh, bullets. So what we'll do is uh, game uh, the model, right? The Okay, so that's interesting, right? We don't have... We have the player model and we have the stats model, but we don't have a way to change the bullets. So what we'll... Uh, and I don't want to pass in the entire game model here because I kind of want to see when, when I call the update method here, right? I kind of want to see, like, what is this thing uh, modifying? Uh, and what is it taking in? So unfortunately, uh, everything that is taking in, it could also be modifying... Um, since we don't have uh, our models uh, as uh, immutables, but I actually tried that before, and it, it, it seems nice, but it actually adds more complication than than it's worth. We just have to be really diligent about how we how we uh, modify things. Um, so now, basically, we're passing in the bullets. Um, uh, let's see. So I don't know why it did it this way. Okay, so we're adding in the bullets, and uh, now we can actually modify them, right? So we can we can create a bullet. So, but first of all, we need to create a bullet. Uh, so so we 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 just um, bullet model, right? And what do we need? Well, the velocity right now is going to be the the default, it's basically the velocity, it's in the direction of the player, right? Like if I'm if I'm pointing this way, the bullet needs to fly this way, right? But we're not worried about this yet. So for now, we're going to say velocity is um, offset dot zero. And then the position, the top position is going to be exactly the player top position for now. Okay. And uh, so now we, we, we added a bullet, and now in our render method, and this is again, um, again, we have render, rendering and and controlling in the same file, which is fine for now, but we will basically uh, rip those apart uh, because we want to reuse the controller code on the server. That's one reason, and obviously it's, it's just cleaner that way. So um, what I'll do is I'll go to the game and we'll create here a bullet class. All right. And the bullet will basically um, will basically be responsible for updating a model. So when it updates, it will basically take in a bullet model and uh, DT, right? The the time that passed. And uh, that's pretty much it. And but when we create it, uh, we need we need basically the 
Well, the current position is obviously the model. So the the bullet just updates the model. That's all it does. Um, and so for now, that it doesn't do anything because we'll just put it there and we won't move it yet. And then the render method will take the canvas and it will take the bullet model. Right? And then it will basically just render. Let me put a show there. Uh, it will basically just render um, the the bullet somehow. So and that's where it gets interesting. Uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll define a, a radius for our bullet, um, and we take that in the constructor, um, and we make all this uh, overridable. But we'll we'll define this as five point zero, and actually it doesn't make really sense to make this overridable to be quite honest. Because, well, let's just, okay, it's, it's really simple enough to do it, so we'll do it. Uh, and then it will take a paint. Right, this basically tells us how to draw the bullet. So we take this paint. And it will default to some paint, right? So basically the uh, bullet paint, it doesn't have to be static. Uh, so the bullet paint is a new paint, and it will be uh, the style will be um, basically fill, right? Because what we're going to do, we're going to uh, we're going to do a circle, right? And so then the the color will be um, colors dot um, make it red for now, right? Um, and that's pretty much it, I think. So, by the way, if you are confused about this kind of thing, um, this is a dartism. Um, I've not seen this in, a, in another language. This basically says that uh, set the fill. Um, hold on. Yeah, uh, sorry, set the style, right? So this one says set the style to something, and then when you're done, return me the paint. Return me the object again, so then I can say and then set the the uh, the color, right? So I can I can it's kind of like as if you create this class and every time I do something here I return this. You probably have seen this in, in other languages, so that then I can have chaining operators, right? So return this and then from every method you return this, so you can keep chaining uh, these method calls. Except in Dart you don't have to do that because this is a way to basically tell it to return. If I do it this way. Now it's going to complain because now it actually returned void or something, uh, or actually returned the painting style, right? And so now the uh, that doesn't have a color on it. I actually need to get the paint back. So okay, so this dot paint, and we'll set it to bullet paint for now. We can always override it. Why is it complaining? Um, must be constant. So I think this could be constant, uh, but then we have to make this one also a constant constructor, and it doesn't work. Isn't it const constructor? Okay, so we can't do that. Um, so what we need to do then is uh, we need to set this. Let's try if we can do it here. Um, this dot uh, paint equal um, equals. Uh, basically, if you gave it a paint, or it's going to be the bullet paint. So and actually, in this case, um, yeah. So this will this should work. Um, so if you give it a paint, it will use it. Otherwise, it will. Uh, if it's null, it will use our, our predefined bullet paint, and it's happy with that. So uh, now what we can do is we can start doing something on the camera. So we can basically say draw a circle. And the offset, right? The offset will basically be the model dot top position to world position to offset. Okay, right? So, uh, and then this is so long that I want to rename it. All right, and then so we have the center of the circle. And then what else do we need? We need the radius and we need the paint. Uh, so, and now it should be happy. Okay, that's nice.
So the interesting thing is, um, yeah, so basically like we're starting out um, right on the player, so we actually will render on top of the player. So we have to make sure now, when we try this out, that we will actually render the bullet after the player. So where are we, okay, so we're rendering this here, and then basically um, we're going to put a method here, render bullets, right? And so what we'll do is for um, I know bullet in game dot. Okay, well that's an interesting thing. So okay, um, so the thing is that a bullet itself. We'll just update the model, right? We don't actually need, what I'm thinking of is like, do we actually need to have a separate thing that just wraps a model and it has just as a render model, a uh, render thing. So the, also the render method itself can be static, right? So basically like, um, Interesting. So I'm thinking of like not creating another another thing around the bolts because I don't want to have No actually we will have it. So basically because we want to be able to say I am done. I want I want the bullet to take care of itself in a way. So what we'll actually have in here, uh we will have an array of bullets. Um bullets. Um you know, that's actually an interesting thing. I want there to be bullets. I don't want there to be just one bullet. And I don't want to have a list of bullets here. I want the bullets thing to take care of it. So I'm going to name this to bullets. And we'll create this class in here. Um, so so bullets will just be a wrapper around uh, creating a, a list of bullets. So we're going to have a list of bullets. Uh, so those are the bullets. And when we construct this thing, um, it can be even private. When we construct it, um, we'll we'll just uh, create, uh, well, we don't even want to pass this in. Uh, we create uh, bullets is this list. All right. And then uh, basically we'll have a method where you can say add a bullet. And so, um, and all we're doing is we, we're taking the tile position where you wanted to add it, and the um, and the velocity of the bullet. Okay. And um, so that one. The only problem is that. If we do it that way, how do we know when when to remove it, right? Um, well, we worry about that later. We can. We, what we might have to do is actually give each bullet an ID, and then uh, and then remove it that way. No, actually, I'm not. I'm not too happy about that. Let me think. So yeah. So so yeah. That's the problem. So we don't need. We actually need a bullet model here. So we do a, give it a bullet model. Hmm. I mean, I almost want this to be a property of this. So if I do this. Right, and we take the model. We take the model here. Right. So now, basically, I have a bullet that 
has its model under the hood and it will keep up. So it's kind of like what I don't like about it that we are going to be pretty deep inside the game and we're going to have updates happening to these models. But it's pretty clear that the bullet thing is responsible for the bullet model. So I guess I'm happy with it. Um, so what we can do then is we add a bullet. And so we say this is a bullets dot add uh, a new bullet. And uh, it's, we pass a model. Wait. Okay, so that works. And then basically on the update method, so I'm going to take that from here. All we have to do is tell our, all our bullets to update, right? Bullet in our bullets. And we say uh, bullet dot update. Um, and we give it DT. All right, and then for the same, we do, we do the same for the render. So we have the render and we give it uh, the canvas. Uh, and so here we don't need the bullet model either anymore, right? So when we render, we just give it the canvas. And then we basically say uh, render, okay. And then basically here we can decide if we need to remove bullets. And at that point we will mark the bullet model for removal or something like that. Like, or we will, we will somehow let our game know uh, that a bullet needs to be removed. But the cool thing is now we have a hold of the model, right? So we no longer have to have an ID or something. We no longer have to guess like what's the underlying model of our bullet that we're dealing with. Because the source of truth should always be the model, right? We don't want to. That's why I'm not trying to. St I'm not keeping any state in here, right? About the about the movement of the bullet, or where it is, or what the velocity is, or whatever, or if it's exploding. This will all be on on the uh, model itself. So now I have bullets, um, which is nice, and now I can just create one. Uh, so bullets is uh, bullets. And, and actually, there's an interesting thing here. Right. Um, so here we give the walls the game walls, but that's because they don't change, right? So that's easy. <laughs> so we give it the the, the list of walls, um, and that's and that does and those walls don't change. Here with the bullets, I'm thinking of we may give it the list of bullets. Uh, and then it could modify uh, that list as well. Yeah, I don't know. Let's let's keep it like this for now. Um, so all we have to do now here in the in our code is in the update code. It's actually not, we don't have to do this anymore. It's much simpler now. We can just say uh, bullets.render canvas, right? And then um, in the update code, we'll just also say, uh, right, uh, bullets.update. And we can probably remove this, this here. All right. Um, so, Bullets update, so we update our bullets and we uh, and we render our bullets. Now, the thing is that the player is actually the one that's adding a bullet. And that might not be correct. Right? And actually now I'm like looking away because what, what's going to happen is we're going to have. Yeah, actually, I, I don't want this to be in the player. So. Yeah, uh, so let's just remove this code. So the thing is actually now I'm thinking that maybe we want to have the bullets list as part of the. Um, as part of the, the bullets um, 
class. Because now what we can do, so we have a list of bullets, but we also um, have the model. So let's just say we pass this in. So let's just play with it a little bit. So we have the uh, bullet model, right? And um, and for each bullet model, so whenever we add a bullet, I'm just I'm just really uh, struggling with where where the state lives, right? Because we definitely want to add a bullet. It's just a question of, because I'm thinking that maybe we don't need this update method here at all. Or that it could be sex. So let's just like, um, let's just make the bullets here a bullet model and see what happens. So we have a bullet model. Right, so when we add a bullet, we just add that model um, to this to the list. Okay, so that's it. So now when we update, we actually are going to modify the bullet model directly, right? So for now, we're not going to do anything here, and when we render. That's when we actually will create a bullet and then render it. And so, the thing is no one gets to decide where, I mean, what I'm trying to see is like, this might become actually a static. So this might actually become um, a, like a render bullet thing in here, right? Because we don't want to just create something just to um, just to render it and then throw it away. Because we're not we don't need it to keep state. Because we're going to keep state here. So now we have this, um, and so we just basically will pass this in uh, like we did, and we also use this part. Um, let's just do. So uh, also we need the bullets uh, to pass in. So we need to actually rename this to bullets. No, actually we don't. Uh, we're just going to pass the bullets as the first parameter. Um, so we don't have to rename it. Um, pass the radius. Uh, pass this. Okay. Um, so we don't need to create the list of bullets. We're going to get that passed in. And that's it. And so now basically we add a bullet, right? We actually modify the model here. When we update, we'll take care of all the position of our bullets. That makes sense. And when we render, instead of calling render on the bullet, we basically just call, uh, right? We need to basically give it the model uh, and we just render that. Render bullet and we give it the canvas and we give it the model, okay. And it's bullet, right? Okay, so let's actually rename this to bullet. Okay, so so I don't know if that makes sense. Um, I kind of went back and forth here and, and reached, a, reached a point where I said, okay, well, there is a thing called bullets. We want something to be ca taking care of the bullets. But we already have a bullet model, so you don't want an extra thing that, that wraps that model. We just need some code, basically, that takes care of updating the bullet model and then rendering from the bullet model. So uh, so now here, in, we need to pass in the game.bullets list, right? And so now this will be uh, modified in place. Um, so here we be the keys basically we need to say pressed keys. Uh oops, what happened here? Okay, pressed keys. All right, if if pressed keys contains um fire, uh we basically will say um we create a bullet model, we still need to do that. And we need the player tile position, find why Y. 
Oh, maybe it's because that's the. Okay, let's figure that out in a second. Why is there? So I don't. I should have access to the player game the player dot type of it. Okay, uh, so now we create the bullet and then we just basically tell our bullets to add the, the this model this bullet. Another way would be to uh, pass the key to to the bullet mod, uh, to the bullets like to that to that thing that takes care of bullets. And that way, um, it, it knows when to add a bullet itself. But I think this is a little clearer, uh, right? Whenever we press space, we add a bullet, right? And then now when we uh, we update the bullets here, right? Actually, but let's do it before because otherwise the bullet will just start moving, like changing uh, position right away. We probably want that to be uh, afterwards. So the camera follow, we want to do that as a very last one. And then... Um, so we're adding the bullets, and then we just need to render the bullets. Um, so obviously, we need to. We already have a bullets render here. Okay. So now, actually, when I press space, we, if everything goes well, we should start seeing a bullet. All right. So I'm gonna fly a little bit, and I'm gonna press space. Okay. And so we create a bullet. And the bullet did move. Actually, we created two bullets. It looks like, and we were moving. So everywhere we are moving, we are, we are creating a new bullet, and the bullets just stay there forever, right? We just keep adding to that list of bullets, uh, so we got some sort of a success here, right? So we can have a bunch of bullets here. Actually, now we can use a player to draw where we are flying. Um, this is not something we want to do, but this is kind of uh, what it does right now. So the thing is, we need to figure out. So we're not even going to worry yet where to start placing the bullet. Um, we can we can figure it out later. What we want to do is we want to say what is the velocity of that bullet. So, um, but before we do that, we're going to look through what we did, and we're going to actually check check that in. Um, so we have some new files here. So we created a bullet. Um, that one we actually need to delete if that still exists. I don't understand why. Um, why this is shown to us. Um, um, okay. And not, not entirely clear why um, Terry just shows us this. Definitely. Oh, the bullet model. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So we created the bullet model with the position and the velocity. We created a bullets. Uh, thing that basically just tracks, like uh, it allows us to add bullets, it, it will update the bullets position and it can render bullets. And we added another key to basically do that, to, to create a bullet. And um, yeah, we added bullets to the model, right? To keep track of those. And, uh, and in the game here, we basically, whenever you press uh, space, we are adding the bullet. So that's that looks good, let's commit that. So uh, player, uh, well, let's just say uh, bullets uh, creating bullet by pressing space. Bullet is not moving at this point. Okay, right. And obviously, like we are, we're creating this bullet right in the in the center of. Oh, actually. We, Okay, so I didn't commit everything I wanted to. So I'm gonna amend this commit. Um, sometimes command line is actually more intuitive than than doing this. Okay, but I, I basically forgot to add these files, but not a big deal. Um, okay, now we have a bunch of bullets that we create. They are stupidly created right in the center of the player. We fix that later and, and they don't move. Okay. So let's just play around a little bit and let's actually give them a some sort of velocity and we're just going to give them any velocity uh, uh, that we want to just to see if, if they would actually move. Um, so we're going to give it a velocity of 2.0, 2.0, right? And I'm actually going to reset the game to get rid of all these um, uh, lines we drew. 
Uh, so now if I create a bu uh, bullet, it, it still doesn't move. And that's because inside the bullets, we don't update anything yet. So what we actually need to do is, um, right, we need to update the bullet with it, with it, with its velocity. So create a uh, function here, update bullet, um, take a bullet model, and which is a bullet, and then we take the uh, time that has passed. And then basically what we need to do is we need to translate. And the thing is we're going to actually look at our player code because this is very similar because we needed to also uh, move, right? So basically here we have a move. And if you can see here that the move is actually a function that we could reuse, right? Can you see that that there's no player related code in here? We just give it the current position, we give it a velocity, and then we basically uh, just move except that it's not taking into account um, the DT, right? So, and that's actually, in my opinion, it's, it's some sort of a bug, uh, which we need to fix right now. So we fix it first here. We need to take DT into account. So, because if, you know, if, if basically the game loop, we don't want the player to move slower if the game loop is slower, right? So, for instance, if, you know, we have five ticks versus one tick, right, we don't want the player to be five times faster for the five ticks. We need to take into account how much time has passed in between the game loops, right? So what we'll do here is we'll actually um, multiply by dt, and, and this will most likely uh, not work immediately. Uh, we'll probably get some weird results for now. But, um, so we need to obviously, everywhere we move, you need to pass it in now. And this is not going to work right away. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to our, okay, update. That's fine. We don't have a problem with that. Okay, so now here we need to pass dt. And here we need to pass dt. Okay, and so now let's see what happens if we refresh. So now, okay, now, oops, uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking, right? So the player is now moving a lot faster because we are um, taking that into account. So, which means our velocity for each thrust needs to be actually less. Like you can see that that's way too much at this point. So what we'll do instead, we're going to look at our game props and we're gonna change the thrust force uh, some sort. Like, let's make it a tenth of what we have, um, right? So, or actually what we should do is, is fix it here, right? Because the thrust acceleration, yeah, how does it actually work if we are uh, accelerating with like this. Okay, so this actually works. Oh, because that's not, well, still too much. So what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll make the player a little heavier and that should fix it in both cases. So let's see that. And I'm actually going to restart the game to make sure that gets picked up. So now, oops, oh, okay, so. Okay, let's do it another way. Um, we may have to fix something here. We may not actually calculate this correctly. Um, even though we're dividing. So, oh, see, that's the problem. We are not actually taking this into account anymore. Uh, we need to fix that. So let's put it to do here. Um, need to take those into account for above uh, thrust, force, values, right? Um, do that, so add that to the dictionary. Okay. Um, so what we'll do here for now is we'll just make this a tenth of what it used to be. And we'll see if that fixes things. Okay, now we're back to a good, okay, but now the, oh, because we changed the rotation. We didn't want to change the rotation factor. We want to actually change the thrust factor here. Okay. Um, okay, so now I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy about this. 
again it works uh, if I do the thing with the mouse okay so I might actually do it a little more uh, do a little bit more of a change uh, so this would be 0 0.5 so instead of dividing by 10 let's just divide by 20 so now you see why why it's kind of nice to have this all together here because we can change the, the keyboard numbers together with the thrust numbers and it's all in one game pops file where we can see so every time we change something like that like it, it could affect numerous things that we need to fix okay so now this actually works uh, so let's go back to our player and we'll, we'll rip out this code now uh, the move code right can actually uh, be a, a kind of an engine kind of thing um, so I'm going to make a file called physics uh, because it's related to physics um, and we'll put that file in there uh, that the, the function so we go back to our player rip that out and go to our physics thing and make the move function um, and then obviously we need to just import all these things and I always push show now here because I don't trust anymore because some of these come from Flutter and some of these come from, from .UI and I always want them to come from .UI. Um, so move isn't defined on the player. Uh, we can just say move on the physics thing. Um, go here, do the same thing. And now we should be back to normal. I just put my computer to sleep, which I didn't want, want to do. The stream is still on, so we're still good. Um, okay, so what I actually wanted to do, I wanted to refresh the game and and see that uh, we can move the still. Okay, so this still works. And uh, so we are good. By the way, uh, if you want to post me in the chat, if you can't see anything right now, it, it says live, but it says also offline. Let me see if I'm still on because I just put my conversation. Okay, it looks like everything is fine, so we'll continue. Um, okay, so now we have that. Now we can actually reuse that method um, in our bullets. So basically what we'll do, we'll just say move. And we might rename that, or we might actually... Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this as a static method on a physics class. Right? And it's basically movement. We could also call it movement, but for now it's fine. We can always change it there. So we won't lose too much sleep over. Um, so I'm going to do physics. And we will first do this, and then we'll uh, we fix all the problems that we now have. Um, so what do we need to do? So move takes the tar position and the velocity and dt. So we got the tar position, we got the velocity, and we got dt. All right, we are done. Awesome. So now we go here, we say physics.move. All right, and the same here. Okay. Uh, and by the way, like uh, whoever we had this uh, comment earlier in the chat that Dart is really hard or something, which is, you know, somewhat, somewhat true. But now you can see how busy, uh, since Dart is typed, um, I can now basically easily just like move things around, rename things, and and it, it helps. The IDE can help me out uh, with that. By the way, if you're interested in just playing around with Dart, there's this cool thing called Dart Pad. Um, I highly recommend that you just play around with it. If you're new to it, I'm going to post it also into the comments. There are some examples even with Flutter. So uh, this is actually one where uh, where I was actually playing around with something, uh, trying to figure something on the canvas. You can actually run this uh, right here, and then you can edit over on the left. Um, so basically, I was, as you can see, I was trying to figure out how to put the, the thrust of the player in the correct spot. So... Um, yeah, for instance, if I just change something here and then I run it again, uh, things will get smaller. So the grid got smaller here. Uh, so you can easily play around with things. There are some examples 
um, some examples around. I, I still prefer to just do things in the IDE most of the time, but uh, if you just want to play around with even, without even installing Dart, or uh, you can you can use that. Um, okay, now back to our game. We have now we j we are now moving bullets. So let's just save that and let's see if this actually works. Okay, okay. No, we're not moving anything. All right, uh, not happening. Um, well, th okay. Are they really not moving? Okay. Well, we figure something out. Maybe we have to refresh the game entirely. Let's try that. Okay. Uh, still not moving. Okay. Um, let's see. Got the bullets. Well, obviously we have to update the uh, call that function, right? Otherwise, nothing will happen. Uh, update bullet. And actually, this is so small. We'll just go ahead and copy this in here. Uh, no point in having a method for uh, one line. Uh, once it grows bigger, obviously we will uh, we will change it again. So now, okay, move bullet and we'll, okay. So let's do let's do this. Still not moving. Okay, let's let's figure this out. Are we calling this update method anyway? Yes, we are. Mm hmm okay are we when we rendering are we passing it th how does it oh so it has its own copy which uh, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of that actually I'm not such a huge fan it's not obvious what's happening um, what I'm going to do, instead of passing these into the constructor, what we actually will do will um, yeah we take control a little bit away. I, I don't like it. Uh, it's too much, too much magic. Um, so also uh, now I can make it an an, an iterable. What is it called? thought it was iterable yeah so basically we know here we don't change the now what actually you know what we wanted to we wanted to be able to change so let's just keep it like this um we want to be able to to remove from the bullets fine um okay the thing is though uh what we're not doing is we're not reassigning this that's the problem so basically what we need to do is we need to say the bullet Type position is that the result of that. Otherwise, we basically just like we calculated the new uh, location, but we didn't actually we didn't actually update it. So let's uh, refresh our game, and now let's shoot. Oh, okay. Now it, oh, see now it's moving. Okay, cool. It's obviously moving way too fast. Uh, so just for for now, we'll give it a smaller velocity. So let's do zero point zero. To 0 0.0. Let's just do uh, one actually here. So now it should fly a little bit more to the to the right instead of up. So see that? Yeah. Okay. Now we got we got bullets flying around. Um, okay. Cool. So now we need to actually figure out what would the uh, the bullet speed be or the, the bullet veloc uh, velocity be, right? It, it's a vector. It needs to be pointing to wherever the player is pointing. Right. So this is very similar to figuring out where we need to move to when we increase when we th uh, do thrust, right? So wh whichever direction we apply the thrust to is also the same direction that we need to apply. Uh, basically, we, that that's going to be our first velocity for the for the bullet. Uh, so let's look at our player and how we did that. So when we apply thrust, we have here increase velocity. So we have the original velocity. We have an angle and we give it a force. Nothing about the player in here, right? So we already uh, programmed this kind of clean. So what we can actually do, we name rename this to uh, something like a force, the force that's applied. And then we can pull this out into our physics class, right? 
and we just call it increase velocity. Uh, I need to import this for math. And now uh, we will have a, an, an error in some places. So what we'll do is physics, all right, and physics. Okay, so it needs to be static, all right, okay. Now let's look at what's going on here. So basically we are taking velocity, um, so basically our player is already moving, right? So let's see, like, let's say we are moving in a direction. Let's clear all this. So let's say our player is already, so our player is already moving in a certain direction, right? When we fire the bullet, right, it should, even if it would have no speed at all, like let's say the fire only like the, we're holding out our hand on the spaceship and we're just putting the bullet there, right? Well, it should already still have the speed of the player, right? Because it was kind of like inside the player, so to speak. So it already has that speed. Plus, then on top of that, it should also have the firing speed. So basically, let's say this is the speed of the player, right? And then this is the, the, the speed that the bullet gets by firing. And then actually our final velocity should be this, right? They're both added together, right? So... Uh, what we actually have to do here is increase velocity. Um, we take actually the player velocity and we take the player angle and then our force will just be whatever we want to be uh, applied to the bullet. Like that's basically the firing thrust, so to speak. And sorry about the uh, the noise outside. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's implement that. So what we have to do here then, if we have a bullet, we have a velocity of... Um, so, so basically, we're gonna say physics dot um, what is it called increase velocity, right? Okay, so it doesn't have that yet. Okay, uh, dot increase velocity, and we're going to take the player velocity. So that's of the model, and we're going to take um, the angle of the player. But the thing is that the 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 uh, the player is already angled, so we basically have to keep pointing in the direction of the player, right? Because the velocity of that player is already pointing. Well, actually, that's not true at all, right? Because because uh, what could happen actually? Let's just say we're moving this way, and now we're pointing this way. We don't want to shoot this way now, right? Like in the direction the player is moving. We actually want to. Uh, apply our, our force in this direction. And so what should actually happen is, so if like, uh, let's say our player is actually moving this direction, right? But it's pointing up like this. And so basically the firing power will be this. It will be much larger probably than the player is moving, but then still the, uh, the bullet uh, should basically be firing kind of this way. Right? It looks misleading because in reality, the player is moving and the thrust is hugely larger, right? Much larger like this. And so basically we will have the like this. It looks almost like it's firing straight, but it's actually correct that it, it will move a little bit with the player, right? Because that definitely still influences the uh, uh, like kind of the vector of, of that bullet. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the... Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to apply, uh, assign the player. I'm actually going to do it up here. No, I don't know. Yeah, let's just do this in here. Uh, game dot player. Let's assign it to a variable. And then uh, it's p dot velocity, and then p dot angle. Or is, do you call it angle? I think so. And then and then we're going to do whatever the thrust force is that we want to apply. We saw that. Um, 2 was way too large, um, 0 0.2 was way too um, little, so, and obviously we'll put this on the game props once we figure this out. Okay, so now actually uh, we should get the, um, should get some interesting results. Okay, so now we're firing into the direction, and you can see though that 
right? We are we are we are firing way too much here, but that's not a big deal. So we can say, okay, we're firing. This is fun. Uh, so however, we, and the thing is now, let's just say, um, let's make this bigger a little bit to illustrate this. So, oh, and, and you can see, whoa, what happened there? Okay, so these bullets are trying to get out of our game, and they can't, and so they all collect in the same space. This is kind of fun. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the player to the right very fast, and then I'm going to fire. Well, you can you can hardly see this, but yeah. So obviously, also the, this is still too much. So let's make this a little uh, smaller. Let's make this half of what we had. So uh, that looks better, right? That looks about what we want it to be. And we can spray the world with bullets, and they all collect on the on the fringes of our of our game because they can't get out. And they keep getting uh, pushed back in because the top position uh, calculation keeps getting them back into our game. And obviously here, this is a problem, right? Firing way too many bullets uh, for one key press. So we need to figure something out there. Um, but for now, I would say this is good. So let's just do that. So, so what we'll do uh, as a last step... Um, well, first of all, let's uh, add this to the game props to be to be clear. And basically, what we'll do, we pass this into the. We, we will assign this to a uh, final uh, bullet uh, double uh, bull that uh, force. Let's call it that. And so the bullet force we will assign from the game props. Um, so I, I'm just doing it this way so I can always later change it to where I'm passing it into constructor if I ever wanted to. Um, so what we're going to say, a uh, bullet force here, and, uh, we create this. Okay. Um, let's put that. It's part of the player kind of, but it, we'll put it here. Uh, it's const. And it, we had it at 0 0.4, and that worked really well. Okay, now we go back here. Now this is happy. Uh, and then when, where we had our 0 0.4 hard-coded, we use the field now, bullet force. And actually, put a comma here to make this a little nicer. All right, cool. So so we have that. Now, now the only problem is that we actually need to move this, right? Because the thing is that we don't want to start firing right in the middle of the play. That's kind of stupid, right? The player will not fire from up here. It will fire from where the gun is. So what do we have to do? We actually have to move this position a little bit. Um, so let's look at our move method here. So the move method takes the top position, a velocity, a double T. So that's not exactly what we want. We actually want, we don't have a velocity. We don't have... Um, we don't have a DT, what we actually want is something where um, we, and we don't know what the velocity is either. We just basically want to move something a little bit um, according to, so basically this kind of thing we want, right? We want actually to, um, I mean, this is like, it says increase velocity, but um, move along angle that's kind of what we want right um so we have basically so let's just say we have a top position right and and then we have the angle that the player is pointing at we don't have a force we still calculate x a and y a and then basically we say uh we want to uh, convert so we want to actually return a new tile position. But first we'll convert this to a world position. The, the world position. And then we basically say um, uh, return a, a new world position, which is vp.x plus xa, and then uh, y plus xy. And then we convert that to back to a top position, right? Uh, I hope that makes sense. 
Um, so basically, what we we're just trying to do, we we're just trying to say, move along whatever the the angle is. Um, move the uh, kind of move some. So basically, what we're doing is this, right? So. Uh, so I have a player, right? I know he is, it, it, let's just say he's pointing the, up. Now this is the position of the player and we're saying move along this angle. Move a little bit here and so put the bullet here when you start. That's all we're saying, right? Um, so now when we go back here, we want to just say uh, physics. And actually that's almost more geometry, but let's just keep it in one class for now. And I move along angle. And we want to say the player dot angle. Okay. And all right. So now let's see if that actually works. Oh, and the thing is obviously we need to tell how far. Um hmm. Well, let's see what happens now. Uh, I think this is not complete yet. So, yeah, so something, so it's called no. Oh, we don't give it the force. Uh, wh hold on, where's the force? It's going here. Let's restart our game and see what happens. So we might have another problem. So let's actually uh, remove this for now. Well, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. It might be null because we just changed this whole bullet force thing. Um, you know, we made it a static property and so on. In those cases, you have to restart the game. Um, so now we're restarting. So now the thing is, we have to think about here a little bit. Um, basically, it's more like it's more like you're scaling almost, but we'll see. So basically, okay, now we're shooting, we're still shooting, uh, nothing bad happening over here. Um, so we're good, and, and we didn't move this at all. So basically what we need to do is, there needs to be a factor here, some sort of a factor. So basically if I say, um, if I say 0 0.4 for instance here, and I do the same thing here, and we save, um, now, if I shoot, still nothing, um, make it larger. Okay, now, is it? let's make it really large to see something. It might also be because these methods are static. That we, okay, so now you can see the difference, right? So now we're actually shooting uh, like way ahead of the player. So we basically just have to tweak that number. And, and, and that basically... Um, Yeah, it's kind of weird. Move along angle. And basically what you want to do is, it's kind of like the magnitude, right? That you want to move. So let's call it magnitude. Um, and actually we're not really moving along, we're kind of scaling along the angle, right? Because we are multiplying. Let's, let's, let's make that clear, long angle. And since it's now, we, we admitted that we're actually scaling, we can say this is a factor, kind of like scale factor, right? So uh, let's do that. And so basically what we'll do is we'll take a percentage of the size of the player. So even if our player later changes in size, we can still figure out uh, what, it, it should automatically just fix itself. So uh, what we need is, so if we just pass the tile size, here. Do we not have this yet? I thought I had this. Um, I th probably had this part of the game. Game dot. Don't have that. Okay, so. Mm, yeah, let's, let's use it. Uh, then we also could use the player size, actually, the, um, the player size, right? So let's try that. Let's see what happens here. And then we'll just uh, apply a percentage to that. Okay, that doesn't look so bad actually. Right, we can we can see that 
and we'll just multiply that with a small factor and we don't make that a prop because that prop will get fixed whenever the the player size changes all right um so let's keep that like that okay now let's try it that looks pretty much good um right if you want it to be perfect and want to move it closer we can so now yeah now it's clearly coming out of the player right so now we can shoot like crazy uh we can move around it's not quite ready for prime time yet right uh i mean this ball is just like they don't hit walls and then they get stuck at the fringes of the game uh and obviously like they need to explode that's one problem and then also they uh they be firing way too many in succession right for one click i'm firing like if i click really short let's see what am i firing yeah, I'm finding way too many. Um, so we need to fix figure out that. So uh, next episode, we will uh, first add uh, collision detection. So w once a bullet hits the wall, it needs to explode. Um, also, what I want to do though before that is these bullets are just way too big. Um, so let me actually like uh, look up real quick what I did here uh, for the bullets sizes. Um, let's see, bullet... What did we draw here? So first of all, they had a different uh, paint slightly um, using uh, bl like the red bullet. I don't like it too much. So let's uh, let's change it also. Uh, so we had uh, black, black 45. Okay. And then uh, what else did I have you? When I, when I then rendered it, we had a radius and the radius was passed into me. So I need to look that up. Uh, in this case, okay, radius three. So that that makes them a little uh, prettier. So we make the default to three. And if you ever want to change it from the outside, we also can. Okay, now we should have smaller bullets. You see? Okay, that didn't apply because while well, the paint is um, a static. Okay, so that looks better. I like those bullets better. Um, but still, obviously, right, they still have the same problems. They still don't collide and so on. And we'll add that uh, in the next episode. So for now, we are done. Um, let's actually review what we did. I should probably make that a habit. So uh, we added physics start, and we basically pulled out some uh, methods that are useful, uh, not only for the player. We pulled them out from the player, but we realized we also need them for the bullets. So we pulled them out. They're all static uh, and they're basically not depending on the player itself and they don't have state. They're just basically um, helper methods. And and then we basically started using them inside the game, right? Um, well, first of all, we started using them inside the player as well, right? Um, and, then, and then we basically started using, uh, so we created the bullets, we made sure that uh, they actually move, right? So we used the, the, one of the physics methods there and we we did the same inside the game. Uh, where we basically, uh, when we create a bullet, we figure out where the bullet actually needs to be. Obviously, this could become a method um, that, you know, because this method, uh, the update method might become too big. And then we added something to the game props. Uh, well, we, we basically changed the, oh, that's another thing, right? We figured out that we need actually DT when we move the player. Um, and then we changed the game props to work with that. So if I just select all of that, commit that, um, so basically bullets, uh, moving, uh, well, start, uh, shooting and moving, um, sh or like shooting from correct position and moving. And then, uh, also, and this probably shouldn't do, we should have probably made a separate commit for that. Also fixed, uh, player, uh, player thrust to take DT into account. Uh, actually, not the thoughts, the player movement, right? Player movement. All right, so that's it. Um, I'm gonna commit that. This is to-do item, yes, I'm fine with the to-do item. We wanna keep that. And then I'm just gonna create the tag. So we have, this is episode 15 and it ends here, so all right, and so push that up. And so now if you want to review the code, it's all online. And Donald, very much, uh, thank you very much for sticking around.
Um, I will keep going with the series. I have no intent of stopping. Um, I hope uh, you know more people will join us in the future on the stream. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, it doesn't matter how many will join. I will keep doing this and I'll also keep posting the videos on YouTube. So even if you didn't watch it uh, on Twitch, uh, you can see it on YouTube later. So thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll talk to you later on the next stream.